Hello. Hello, YouTube. I can't control what he puts in the videos. Hello, YouTube. Welcome back to the Every Closet. My name is Stephanie, and along with my partner, Ethan, we are two full-time resellers of used clothing on Poshmark and on eBay. So if that sounds like something you want to do or something you want to know more about, hit subscribe down below. And otherwise, let's get into today's video. Today's video is highly requested by about five or six people. <laughs> <laughs> it is the continuation of the Bolo alphabet. So finally, we're releasing B videos. Going to be releasing these videos, you know, definitely more often than I was in the previous few months. Um, I vowed to you guys that I would finish this series and I meant it. I like that was solemn. I'm going to finish it. So let's move on with B and we'll just go all the way to Z and learn a lot of stuff. And it'll be so fun for you guys, I hope. I don't know. The five of you that really like this series. First B brand is B Dratty. This is a high-end men's clothing and golf brand. It was founded by Billy Dratty in 2013. They're known for their polos and shorts and a bunch of other men's clothes. They also have some junior sized polos for boys. The retail is usually around 120 for their polos, 200 plus for pants, hoodies, and just generally more money for more substantial items. I want you to bolo this, but don't pay up for this brand. It can be a very quick and reliable flip, especially on eBay, but it does mostly resell between $20 and $40 most times, which is amazing if your cost of goods is, say, $5, but not ideal if, say, you live in Vancouver and your cost of goods is, like, $15 for a men's polo shirt. Why, Value Village? Why? Whenever your cost of goods is low, this is a great brand to pick up. I also want to note, their new tags items don't seem to have that much more value than good condition used items. So that's something I want you to keep in mind when you're sourcing. Just because the tag says like $120 doesn't mean you can pay $20 for that polo shirt because it's still probably going to sell between $30 and $50. So not quite enough markup or at least in our business model so do with that information what you will but this is a great brand to pick up at the bins it's great to pick up at thrift stores that charge you three to four dollars per shirt like nice thrift stores and yeah i would definitely pick it up under any of those circumstances oh, hello stop putting things on camera that ethan's gonna want to slide into places Ugh. the next b brand and i'm gonna screw this up is b Hadiku Sumo. This brand is named for designer Betty Hadiku Sumo and is sold at a few boutiques across the United States. It's another fairly obscure brand, but I can't deny that the comps are high. However, the sell-through rate does seem to be inconsistent. So if you find a piece of these, make sure it has enough other things going for it before you source it. Um, but just scrolling through comps, it makes me really want to mention it because I'll stop and consider a piece from this brand any day. They use a lot of linen fabric and retail between two to three hundred dollars mostly and they can resell between thirty to a hundred dollars. Don't count on that higher end for certain although most of their pieces are one size fits all. They all though didn't make sense there did it? Next is Baba. Okay story time. One time I went thrifting and this was a few like mere weeks into my reseller journey like I'd barely started and I took a few photos of labels I found that I didn't know to look up later. And later on that day I was screenshotting labels of major bolo brands for research because you know I've always done this. When I went to post the things that I found on Instagram stories I accidentally posted the bolo brands as things I'd found that day. So I posted just tags of bolo things as like, look what I found thrifting today, mixing them up. Um, I didn't realize it until people started messaging me for every single one of those brands, telling me to go back and get them all. Um, most emphatically, they said I had to go back and get the baba sweater. It took me so long to realize my mistake that, that by the time I realized it, I was too embarrassed to admit it. So I pretended I went back for the baba sweater and that I wasn't able to find it. If you're watching this and you're that person that I said that to, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sometimes 
sometimes my mouth and my fingers say things before my brain has a chance to really consider it fully. Anyway, all this to say, follow this freaking brand. It is entirely a knitwear-focused brand. They're all handmade in Barcelona. It's a family-run facility, and it's super sustainable with lots of like high quality fabrics, you know, wools, cashmeres, etc. Their pieces retail for approximately two to four hundred dollars. And wait for it, they resell between a hundred and two hundred and fifty dollars. That is one of the best retention of value that we've come across so far. But I'm looking at a used knit gray cardigan with two fabric poles that resold for 225 US dollars right now. So do not under any circumstances skip on this brand unless maybe if it if it comes up if maybe you didn't actually find it and you get confused like I did and then you have no choice because you don't have access to it. A uh, silly past step otherwise shy and polo. Next is Babaton. Babaton is one of what I consider the two major pillars of Aritzia. I consider Babaton and Wilfred to be like the main two Aritzia brands. Babaton is so ubiquitous within Aritzia that you can tag your Babaton pieces as either Aritzia or Babaton itself and they'll sell equally well either way. Versus brands like say Sunday Best I always tag as Aritzia to increase their reach, but Babaton and their subline group, Group Babaton Pieces, can do just as well just being tagged Babaton. They usually retail for around $50 for small things like camisoles or crop tops, and up to $400 for like substantial leather or coats or things like that. I personally believe the best thing to find from Babaton are their jackets. When you check the comps and you sort by like highest to lowest price, all of the highest bunch of them are jackets, mostly wool and cashmere, pico or trench coats and then a few puffer jackets and there's a dress worn by Meghan Markle if you don't know anything that's been worn by any of the royals or then then someone got a picture of it shoots resale value up a ton when you sort by just in you're gonna see comps anywhere from eight dollars to 150 dollars and i just really want to impress upon you look up the specific babaton piece before purchasing to resell especially since my thrifts and likely yours too mark them up a ton every babaton piece has a style number on the care tag and most of the time that will take you to the style name and to some stock photos for that item. A word of caution about that though, recently all my Babaton stock photos got taken down off Poshmark for DMCA claims, so use your stock photos at your own risk and definitely never use them on eBay, but that's just been my very recent experience and we've, you know, used them a lot before. We've had Babaton sweaters sell within like half an hour for $75 and we've had them sit for over a year for as little as $30. So it's very dependent on how popular that particular item is. So check it out in the resale comps before you spend money on it. Next is Bad Birdie which is men's golf brand again. I can't believe I am saying this about one of these brands right now, but Bad Birdie skyrocketed after being on an episode of Shark Tank. I'm so shocked to hear this. It is a golf brand. They make men's, women's, and kids clothing for golf-related activities. They're known very much for their fun and colorful printed polo shirts. I think they launched in 2017. Their whole thing is golf should be fun and inclusive for everyone. Comps are nuts. So their polo t-shirts cost $72 each on their website. That's American. And the comps on eBay and Poshmark US have those polos reselling anywhere from $20, though I probably wouldn't be accepting that, to $80. Yeah, more than retail. Most sell between 40 and 50, but seriously, that value retention, I almost want to stock up on these like with retail arbitrage if they have a killer sale sometime or something. Although we don't do a ton of retail arbitrage, but if we did, this might be a good brand to try it with. Anyway, high tier bolo, especially if you're not getting gouged price-wise at your thrift store or wherever you source. Next, Badgley Meshka. This is an American designer fashion label founded by Mark Badgley and James Mishka. And they have been in business since 1988. So quite a long time. They make all sorts of women's clothing, dresses, 
dresses, shoes, accessories, and even wedding dresses and bridesmaid dresses, etc., as well as wedding shoes. They are known for their bridal shoes, and a lot of brides covet having a pair of Badgley Miska shoes for their wedding day. These retail in the two to four hundred dollar range, which is typical for the brand's other items as well. Though obviously not their wedding gowns. <laughs> I've never found one of those though. All that being said, comps are only pretty good for this brand. It's a mid-tier or yeah mid-tier below for sure. Comps for most pieces fall between $20 and $50. Uh, some higher and even a few over $100 but I certainly wouldn't advise expecting that. We had a merino wool sweater from this brand in a $10 bag and it had a pull and it had a hole and it still did sell for $30 on Canada so that's a good sign. If you do find some new tags bridal shoes though I wouldn't dip below $100 for those and they sell very well and the wedding gowns of course should sell you know maybe a thousand dollars at least and they have one pair of shoes called the Katrina shoe these have comps well over $400 up to $700 for used ones so don't skip on those specifically. And also we've recently sold a gold sequin um, like bridesmaid dress or I guess just a cocktail dress and I think that went over a hundred but Ethan, can you pull up the comp? We sold it. So yeah, I actually do mostly pick up Badgley Mishka most of the time. Next is Bailey 44. This brand is carried pretty much everywhere like Anthro, Revolve, Nordstrom, Nordstrom Rack, The Bay, like so many retailers. LA based and started around 2006. Their slogan is buy women for women. That's nice. Their pieces retail between $80 and $300, totally depending on the piece, but this brand is definitely a lower tier bolo for sure. You're gonna find it way more often than you should actually pick it up. I would say finding a piece with this brand is almost like a neutral fact about it. It's not beneficial and it's not detrimental. You'll just want to evaluate the piece based on everything else, meaning the fabric content, the condition. Is it really low cost of goods or is it new with tags, etc. Um, I've picked it up a few times and I've passed on it way more times than I've picked it up. Comps range from five to two hundred dollars, skewing heavily in the twenty to thirty five dollars for most pieces. All the highest comps are, say it with me, jackets and dresses. That's just a lesson that I hope I've drilled straight into all of our brains at this point. Jackets dresses worth more money. Next is Baldwin. So Matt Baldwin founded Baldwin Denim in 2009. It's women's and men's clothing, especially jeans. And I should tell you straight up that any tag that has the full name spelled out, Baldwin, older item, and their new ones have no vowels. It's like B-L-B-W-N. And those sell a lot better these days. They are more recent. It's a Kansas City based brand. It's been somewhat declining in popularity recently. So it is maybe now a mid to lower tier bolo, but comps still show it's worth picking up if you're paying a low cost of goods. Their pieces retail quite high, one to $400, and they'll mostly resell between 20 and 50, with a few higher outliers, like for trendier jean styles or whatever is most recent. Okay, Balenciaga, okay. <laughs> so there's this small indie brand that you've likely never heard of. It's called Balenciaga. <laughs> Sorry, I don't even know why I wrote that. I'm kidding. Of course we've all heard of Balenciaga. If only for that one time that they sold absolutely wrecked sneakers for like $1,800. Hey man, maybe that's a whole I'm caught up in the zombie apocalypse vibe. What do I know about fashion? I am not here to judge whether or not something's fashionable. I'm just here to make money off of those more cultured in clothing and fashion than I am. Um, according to Wikipedia, it was founded in 1919 by a Spanish designer. That company closed temporarily in the 1970s and then reopened in Paris in 1986 under completely different owners. Christian Dior called Balenciaga the master of all of us, if that helps to sort of Im impress upon you how important and ubiquitous this luxury brand is. They make women's, men's clothing, shoes, accessories, and bags, and literally everything in the category categories we cover on this channel. Most of their stuff retails for over $750, up to a max of around maybe $8,000, maybe a bit higher. Comps are obviously silly, especially since I'm sure a good portion of them on Posh that are sold are fakes. So if you find a Balenciaga piece, my two pieces of advice are authenticate it. 
and then sell it for over $200, maybe up to $1,500 or more. We sold a Balenciaga skirt that we got for a ridiculous $40 at a consignment store and we sold it for 190 US dollars. To be fair, it was fairly plain and just like a solid red skirt. But still, I thought that was about the lowest I would have gone on that thing. And so you should think that too, because that was a pretty basic piece and I wouldn't have gone much lower than that. Next is Bally. Okay, <laughs> I've picked up a lot of Bally. I need to be a little less loyal to Bally and maybe stop picking it up so much. Bally is as old, oh my God, I wrote old as balls. Bally's really old. <laughs> it's a Swiss luxury fashion label established in 1851. Vintage Bally exists, it exists everywhere. Like there's a ton of it, but it sells not anywhere near what modern Bally pieces will go for, which are much harder to come across. Looking at the little collection of Bally shoes that I've collected, I wouldn't be picking most of those up today. Um, they're all pretty basic and older styles. However, it looks like Bally definitely sells better uh, over on eBay compared to Poshmark. So yeah, I'm gonna make sure those are all cross-listed after this. <laughs> um, but their items, men's and women's shoes, clothing, bags, and other wearables do retail for a lot, 500 to $1,500. So you know, some money. But the resale's different. Some people let Bally shoes go as low as like $15 and then up to a max of maybe $800 for certain highly sought after sneakers or bags or leather jackets. By the way, they do not make leggings. That is a different brand. And if you see Bally leggings, just don't, don't get them, please. They're not this brand. They're not a good brand either. But also likely be picky with Bally itself. You definitely especially want to look up the piece itself if you're paying up. People are still selling empty Bally shoe boxes and things like that for $15 to $20. So be careful, but it is a luxury brand. Just make sure you're finding the best pieces. And also I found that their belts sell particularly well. That's what I know. Okay, Balmain. Balmain is right up there with Balenciaga in terms of a luxury fashion royalty. It was founded in 1945 by Pierre Balmain. So it's based in France. Apparently it was acquired by some investment group back in 2016 for $500 million. Oh, euros. That's, <laughs> that's a fan yourself with it amount of money. Their pieces retail for a brick ton. Like $300 retail for a sports bra to $10,000 for some jackets, $5,000 for some bags, some dresses. I know literally nothing about authentication for this brand. In fact, I picked up a fake piece once and it was embarrassing for me. Basically, there's, there's a ton of fakes out there for this brand. So definitely get these pieces authenticated. When I tell you not a single substantial fashion piece from this brand should sell under $200 resale, that is a strict hard line. They even have some plain, just plain t-shirts that are a collab with H&M and even those can resell for around $100 used. So the only exception seems to be jeans. Most of the comps of their jeans are around $75. Otherwise, if it isn't broken, if it isn't fake and it retailed for at least $700, like 90% of Balmain does, I need you to resell it for at least $250, okay? Yes, I opt it, because it should be higher. There are comps on Posh as high as $2,500 and on eBay for used items. In particular, there is a Barbie and Balmain collab line that takes up a ton of the highest comps. People are searching for that, but we have a Balmain leather jacket that we listed and we listed it for $1,500. So it hasn't sold yet, but I'll let you know when it does. Coffee, coffee break, coffee break. Okie dokie. We're filming on the channel. Oh. Beep, 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 beep. Balenciaga, Balmain. Awesome, 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 awesome. Pretty much all you need to know. Okay, bitches, we're getting there. Next brand is Band of Outsiders. This is a London-based fashion label with a like preppy sort of vibe to it. And sadly, it's actually no longer in business. It ran from 2004 to 2015. 
declaring bankruptcy, which I find fascinating. They made shirts, slacks, and had a shoe collab with Sperry. Blazer skirts, you know, classic business casual attire. Comes range for used items between $20 and $70, most in the $35 range, um, which is solid, especially for a company that went bankrupt. But I tell you about it because certain pieces are still very sought after and their jackets in particular can go on the higher end. There's one comp from the past month on eBay of $475 for a men's suede bomber jacket. So definitely don't skip over it. Can't begin to advise you like what to pay for it. I will find out my opinions on that as I usually do at the checkout counter. <laughs> Next is Baobab, which turns out there are two clothing labels that go by this name. One of them is men's polo shirts and the other one is women's dresses and swimwear which is sold at Revolve. I hope we don't find this shocking but the one I'm telling you about to Bolo is the one sold at Revolve. They say they're a statement swimwear and resort wear brand. Their dresses are like super bright with a lot of satiny fabric, super trendy right now, um, and they retail between $150 and $400 mostly. Comps on reselling platforms are between $35 and $90 for most of the bathing suits and between $100 and $250 for their dresses, which seems to depend on which style you find. Uh, some are much more popular than others. I'd pick this up finding it anywhere, paying up to a max of, say, $20 for a swimsuit and a max of maybe $40 for one of their dresses. That's my guess anyway. Who knows what I would actually pay when faced with shiny new bolos that I've never found before. Next is Barbara Bui. Bui? I I'm probably saying that wrong. Anyway, it's a French luxury fashion label. They launched in 1983, and in 2003, they joined the House of Haute Couture. So, as we've learned, it makes it a very official high-end fashion label. Um, they make women's shoes, bags, they do make ready-to-wear clothing, and in 2019, apparently launched a men's line as well. So that's interesting. Their aesthetic is supposed to be sophisticated rock and roll, which, sure, I guess I see it. Most pieces retail between $300 and $1,500, most in the five to 600 range. So I'm just gonna repeat myself for the one millionth times. Comps should be higher, but they're currently not. So. Most comps I see range between $30 and $100 with huge variation in and above that. The highest comps over $400 resale are all women's leather jackets and leather purses with like lots of fringe on them. Other notable items from this brand are their blazers, tall boot, large leather or python bags, and other types of jackets that aren't leather. It seems... Patience is key with this brand. So you might hold on to your item a little bit longer, but it is valuable. Like the House of Haute Couture says it's valuable. So it is valuable, but you might have to wait a bit to sell it. Next is Barbara Hirsch. This is not the famous artist that you might be familiar with. There's no C in Hirsch, for one thing, but instead it's a very obscure fashion label named after its American designer that makes leather pieces of clothing for women. They're carried at Nordstrom and just a fairly obscure brand. As I mentioned, not many comps at all, but if you see this tag, it might be worth some good money. It's worth a small risk, but I can't guarantee anything because of how few have resold so far. The data is too sparse. However, it seems to retail for a ton, so may as well know about it and the resale, we're gonna have to find out. Ostensibly, it should sell for a good amount. Another super old ubiquitous luxury fashion label, Barber. It's a British label. It was founded by John Barber in 1894. It had designs, manufactures, and markets waxed cotton outerwear, ready-to-wear clothing, footwear, and accessories for men, women, and children, and even dogs. <laughs> it is now a fifth-generation family-owned business. It does not retail as high as you might think, especially if you're Stephanie before you looked it up just now. The retail ranges between between $50 and $150 for basic clothing, $2 to $500 for jackets, and $1 to $200 for like rain boots and boots in general. Um, they're known most for their jackets, and those are definitely the best comps resale wise. Rain boots are also good, but my thrifts always mark up rain boots like any rain boots. So and there are comps as low as $20, so don't pay up for the boots, but they call them Wellington, and they usually sell for around 60, 70 max. Um, jackets can sell between 75 and $200 resale, a lot below and some above. One thing to covet right now is they did a collab with Montclair, 
If you know Moncler, we're definitely going to go over it, but it's a very expensive luxury brand, so those items can go for well above what other Barber items can go for. Next is Bardot. It's an Australian fashion label. They mainly make dresses. What is it with Australian dresses? Is it the weather? That's fair. Anyway, the brand is pretty well known for being carried at Revolve. They do make separate pieces like blazers. Again, anything you'd wear like to an event with some formality to it. And a few leather items and like a corset bustier section. It's another lower tier bolo brand though. It's worth recognizing, but do check comps. I actually found a gold bardo mini dress in a recent haul of ours. I forget which one. Anyway, I ended up passing on it because they wanted over like 15 to 20 dollars and when i checked comps there just wasn't enough profit in it to pick that up most comps are between 25 and 50 dollars with the way my thrift store is priced i'll likely only be grabbing this if i find it at the bins or wherever i might find it under five bucks i would consider it worth a try and there are certain styles that can go over $50 as well. Next is Barefoot Dreams. In 1994, Annette Cook created a calming children's line, but when Annette died of cancer in 2012, her husband Stan took over the brand and developed it into what it is today. Today, they're most known for fuzzy, super soft knitwear, loungewear, and blankets for the whole family. Their pieces range from $20 to $30 for cozy mittens to like $270 for full-length robes at the higher end. It's another super classic reselling clothing bolo, but as such, there is no shortage of it for sale online, which has been slowly driving prices down. Not enough to knock it off this list. I hear a lot of people saying they'll only pick up their robes now, or like they won't pick it up most of the time, or plus size items, or new tags, or whatever, which makes sense to me looking through comps. Most comps these days are $20 to $50 for used pieces with a weirdly large portion of them selling for exactly $35. The highest comps I see, other than the duvet set, which are pricey pricey, is this one leopard print cardigan. I'll ask Ethan to post up some pictures of it here. This has comps that range from $130 to $190. Evidently it is rare and highly sought after. Next is Barry Kieselstein Cord, which sells belts and bags. We're plunging right back into obscurity here with this one. It is founded by an American American designer, artist, and photographer, Barry Kieselstein Cord. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, in 1972 in New York. So its products include jewelry, silver jewelry, belt buckles, bronze, statuary, leather goods, including handbags, eyewear, home furnishings, and accessories. Um, and as many, many, many vintage pieces, which are, I think, con considered collector's items and are as if not more more valuable than the modern pieces from this brand, though the brand is still operating. Um, it took a short hiatus in the 2000s and returned in 2012. I want you to look out for anything with his name on it whatsoever, but since we are ostensibly not discussing jewelry or home goods, our focus is on their purses and belts and other accessories. Comps vary a lot. I believe the retail value for this brand is originally in the one to three thousand dollar range. So I do see comps under a hundred dollars, but I wouldn't personally be going that low if I found an authentic piece by this brand. It seems comps can range from forty dollars to two thousand plus dollars for certain items. It is quite all over the place, but I'll tell you now. I'd pay maybe up to 40 or $50 for anything that has this dude's name stamped on it or the little moon and star symbols that mean this brand. Next is Barton Pereira. Pereira? Sorry. It's a sunglasses brand and an eyeglasses brand by two designers who have the last names of the brand's name. Um, they started it in 2008 and their website states their glasses are meticulously handcrafted over multiple weeks in Japan. Um, their sunglasses retail between $500 and $1,000 or at least their current collection does, and their prescription glasses between four and seven hundred dollars. Comps are super fun, though as usual, a giant range. But I do spy a set of two Barton Pereira triangle-shaped glasses cases someone sold for thirty dollars, just the case. This 
to me, makes whoever is selling their actual sunglasses for $30 look a little silly. Sorry! <laughs> I'd say most pairs should resell between $50 and $150, less for the optical glasses than the sunglasses. Although if your thrift charges as little as mine does for optical lenses, they're definitely still worth picking up and flipping. And there are lots of comps over $150 too. I just wouldn't necessarily count on that. And I like telling you guys about high-end sunglasses brands that aren't Gucci, Chanel, Prada, things that your thrift store is gonna know and mark up. Barton Pereira, Pereira, I'm so sorry I'm screwing it up, but that might slip their knowledge and thus you could get it for, you know, a normal pair of sunglasses price, but they're not normal. They're very pretty at a pretty price. Basique. Deborah Sams and Mary Lou Ryan founded Basic, pronounced basic, okay, in 2006 to create what they couldn't find apparently, high quality, sustainability sourced wardrobe essentials. It's another Australian brand being called basic. It is something that the others are not, distinctly non-event wear clothing. Um, they make classic wardrobe staples, loungewear, minimalist jewelry, shoes, jackets for men and women. Their cheapest item for sale right now is a solid tank top for $100. Most items go between three and $600 and they have some of their trench coats selling for over $2,000. They make leather joggers, which thrills me as a concept. <laughs> However, the comps aren't stellar for how pricey they are. On Poshmark US, they mainly keep to the $20 to $50 range resale, though jackets and dresses do sell higher as per usual. And on eBay, they're a bit more, and I'd say most of the pieces are being shipped right from Australia to the US there too. So I, I don't see any leather pieces with sold comps, so that might explain the lack of the higher resale value pieces since all their priciest prices are their leather goods. But we shall watch this closely and likely not pay up for it right now, but know about it and look it up. Next is Batsheva, I think. Founded in 2016 by Batsheva. Hey, this brand plays with American styles of feminine dresses. They say they have a Victorian meets prairie sensibility, which is the vibe that I am getting, yes, maybe a little cottage core vibe. They say they've modernized and retooled historical looks, and again, I agree, I'd call their style a collection of pieces, I can't believe I wrote that, a collection of pieces I would never personally have the audacity to pull off, but they're very cute. <laughs> Okay, they retail between two and seven hundred dollars with kids and girls dresses being a bit lower than that. The comps are really good as of right now. I don't know how much longer cottagecore is going to be such a trending thing because it's been for a while. So whenever that drops off, then we're going to have to watch how that affects this brand because that is a lot of their style. However, right now the dresses we sell around one to two hundred dollars not much lower than 85 dollars resale and then their other clothing and kids clothing etc sells for a bit lower than that you know non-dress pieces though they usually still hold at least forty dollars in resale value even the kids clothing so definitely a brand to know about for now the next brand is baum und federgarten <laughs> Founded in Copenhagen in 1999, it is one of the leading Danish fashion houses. Their pieces are carried at tons of places, Nordstrom, Barfetch, Back Smith Avenue, etc. They retail between $150 and $500 at the higher end for things like jackets, mostly between $200 and $300. Comps legit almost seem random. They're lower on eBay than they are on Poshmark, so do with that info what you will. That's rare. But I think you can expect between $50 and $150 for a good condition piece. There are lower and higher comps, of course, but I'd say if it's a cute piece, like good condition, good fabric, $100 is a semi-reasonable expectation. Although, we have a Baum und Fender Garden piece that we've had for like a year and a half and it hasn't sold. So, I feel like that's a giant asterisk. I don't know why when I wrote this I was so optimistic about this brand, but I think it's new with tags, Baum and Fender, Fender, I'm gonna stop saying the brand name. I think it's new with tags and it still hasn't sold. So I don't think you can usually expect a hundred dollars. I don't know, that's what I wrote. So I guess that's what comps looked like, but I don't know you guys. It's definitely at least worth knowing about, that's for sure. Next brand is Bazaar Deluxe. Apparently they started their journey in 2013 to discover new cultures, flavors, traditions, landscapes, and different languages. They make one thing very well. Aztec print, 
ethical knitwear and wool capes. They have variations, but jackets, parkas, shawls, belted floor length cardigans, that whole vibe. A few blazers, you'll see what I mean. We will look at comp. It will mostly be those things. They retail for $500 to $1,500. They are sold from their own website or from like Farfetch or Ukes or High and other international fashion carriers. There are a few listings and even slightly fewer sold comps, but they are encouraging, ranging from $40 to $250. You might sit on one of these, but looking at them, I doubt I will be able to resist if I find one of these unless I'm being very much overcharged, but the resale on these is encouraging, although rare. Not Next is BB Dakota. This is a brand carried everywhere. We're talking again Nordstrom Revolve, The Bay, Nordstrom Rack, Anthropology, Amazon, although that one was likely not by their own design. Um, it is another lower tier bolo brand for sure. It does usually only retail between $75 and $150, so it isn't shocking that most pieces resell between $10 and $40. The only reason it makes this list is for their jackets, especially leather jackets and suede, which can go upwards of $50 to $75. And a few standout pieces, namely this silly 2003 utility jacket that Kristen Stewart wore as Bella in the first Twilight movie, that can resell over $200. Also a sequin silver duster from Anthropology, and then all the ones above $100 are mainly leather jackets, Sherpa jackets, Beaufort fur jackets, etc. Just don't go picking up any of their like t-shirts. That is a waste of your time and my time and all of our time. So don't do that. But it has some good pieces. Next, we have BCBG Max Azria, and I'll throw in there BCB Generation as well. So you've likely seen this brand a lot, BCBG Max Azria or Generation. It's sold in a lot of malls, I think, have this store, and it's very hit or miss. So I want you to know that it can have value, and I want you to look up specific pieces, and I want you to use all your other reseller instincts. How cute is it? Unique is it? Interesting is it? What is the fabric content? Is it new with tags, etc.? We've had a few pieces sell very quickly over $50 and then we've had like, I can't give this away for $7. So it's very hit or miss, but I need you to know about it and that it can hold very good value. Some people do really covet this brand and to be honest, it does retail for like 300 bucks or so. So the, the comps are wild. I pass on it most times I see it, but if I see something that's especially cute, I will pick it up, especially for lower cost of goods. In a similar lower end vein, we have BDG. Good old BDG is an Urban Outfitters brand, although they do also carry it at, say, Nordstrom Rack or places like that. Would I pick it up? Sure. Yes. I have done so. I currently, though, wouldn't pay anything over $4 for a piece. They're usually Urban Outfitters exclusive collection of denim and elevated basics. So this is the lowest tier of the Urban Outfitters brands, which I think I've mentioned are generally even a bit below anthropology brands in terms of resale value. So present day Stephanie wouldn't even list a free BDG item if it was say a plain yellow t-shirt or something, because that'll still max out around 10 to $12. You should recognize it though, and you'll see a lot of, you'll see a lot of it in a lot of comps. It can be somewhere between five and forty dollars. But I'm gonna need you to think to yourself, wow, this must be the single coolest BDG pace they ever made. And then then maybe you can pay up to ten dollars for it. Like these really cool sunset pants or this Rolling Stones denim jacket. Those are fun. I'd pay ten bucks for those, but it's a lower amount. I forgot that's the end because we're just doing BA to BD. And of course there's only one brand that starts with BD, BDG. So we're all done for the B1 video today. I think that was 27 brands, but we'll see. Um, let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. Are any of these surprising that they made the list? Are any of these things you've never heard of? I would love to love to know. And otherwise we will see you guys in our next video. And so hit subscribe so you don't miss it. And we give out lots of info because we like you all. Okay, bye-bye.